Hello. Uh, for those of you who missed it, I'm Jonathan. And uh, I am uh, the executive chef and owner of J-Squared Food. We are a local small catering company in New York. Um, we specialize all of our food is uh, get local ingredients and season, seasonally inspired. And we do a new throughout the pandemic. We've been doing a new menu every week. Uh, for people, we do delivery all throughout the city. And also uh, pop up events and other things. So let's, uh, let's get started. So um, you all should have received, uh, you all should receive like a recipe eating media must. Uh, like this. We are going to start by both the third one, the, the, the tart recipe. We're going to do the, we're going to make the dough quickly. Um, if you don't want to make the dough or you're not cooking or you're cooking later, you can feel free to use puff pastry dough. Um, it's great for this. You can feel free to use pot, even like store made, store bought pie dough will work well. This is just a easy tart dough that I've used a lot. It seems like it might only be sweet and you can 100% use it for sweet things. I do like a like an apple tart with it. These go full screen. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna go full screen because it's easier to admit people this way. But I will shift it. And so the you can use so you can use this tart dough for savory. You can use it for sweet. We're using it for savory. Um, don't mind just because there's sugar in it. It's only to keep it flaky and to keep it from falling apart. You don't want to skip out on sugar, even if you are using with a savory recipe like we are. Um, trust me. So, super simple recipe. My food processor. Um, so, and um, if you have a food processor, you should be using your metal blade because uh, it's thinner and it's going to cut through the, the butter and the ice and the later. If you don't have a food processor, you can do this with uh, like a pastry cutter. You can do this with a um, can. Is that your question? Do it with two knives? You can do it with two knives. You're just going to have to put a little bit of elbow grease into it. Okay. Um, especially because, I, and then I would maybe make sure your, the water that you're going to be using later is really cold, but maybe skip the ice because it'll be hard for you to cut up the, hard for you to cut up the ice with your two knives. But the food processor will do it. So, into the bowl of my food processor, I am adding two cups of flour, and I'm just using regular all-purpose flour. You can, um, you can substitute and try to make it gluten-free and add almond flour or uh, chickpea flour. You'll just get a slightly different texture than what you might be used to from traditional pie or tart. Um, sorry, I'm just waiting for it. All right. Uh, but you want two cups. And if you're going to be using like a gluten-free flour blend or something like that, you want to make sure you get the, the one that is one-to-one -one ratio. All right, so this is two cups. The auto link doesn't work. Okay. Um, and then we are also going to add our sugar and our margarine or butter. I like butter if, unless you're going carve or serving this with like a meat meal. Um, I think it just gives it a little bit of a better texture. But margarine is fine. If you can use margarine, I like the, the vegan sticks. Those are really the, uh, the great way. And you want you want cold, cold butter and you want one and a half sticks, which is like three quarters of a pound um, or 12 tablespoons. It seems like a lot, but it's gonna make a good size dough. And you just want to take your butter and you want to cut it into little chunks because this will have to mix in and incorporate evenly. If you're afraid you're going to get too warm, you can always do this and then add it and put it into the refrigerator or the freezer before you're doing this. Um, this is fine. If we were doing a, like a, like a more delicate pastry for dessert, I would say definitely you want even more chill than it is because you really want that flakiness. But since we're doing savory, it's going to uh, it's gonna work itself out just fine. You don't have to worry too much. So that was one stick, and then I want the last half a stick. Um, I've never done this with substituting oil instead of butter. You could potentially. Um, 
you're just gonna have a sort of more, like a softer crust. It's not gonna necessarily get that flakiness that you associate with just something freshly baked because the oil is going to mix throughout and it's gonna just be a little more mealy. So, put that on and take my sugar. Just, as I said before, it's not too much. Just a tablespoon. By all. And this dough is really easy for anything. You can do it for this tart. You can do it for a any sort of dessert I've done, like a, like a fresh raspberries or other berries that brush with like a little bit of honey and made like a really good on this tart dough. Really delicious. Okay. That's everything for now in the food processor. So just gonna pulse it a little bit, just to get everything mixed. So it'll out. Ah, I should plug it in, that would help. Bear with me one second. All right. So we're just going to pulse this a couple times just so that we can get the butter incorporated throughout everything else. Possible, thank you. Uh, and we want to sort of look in and see maybe like like teen size. And then we're going to start pouring our ice water. You want about half a cup of ice water. You want a little bit of ice in it. That's good. Um, it'll keep it the cold. Ice will keep it uh, moist and flaky later on. So you can keep pulsing it, or you can put it on to like first speed or second speed, and just start pouring through. If you're doing this by hand, with a hand mixer or with knives, you would do this very quickly. Like you mix it together. You can sort of keep like one knife or a fork uh, or a piece of butter and keep sort of mixing it while you slowly stream in water. Now, like the dough will start to come, it'll just form little sort of doughy like chunks you can see, it'll start coming off the side of the food processor. You feel you little like just comes together into a ball of dough. Wait out. Here is our dough. I'm just gonna move the part of the side. Or see it. And it's gonna feel almost like pizza dough. It's not gonna be super sticky, and it's not gonna be quite as soft as cookie dough, and not quite as firm as like, you know, a dough you might have to follow. And you just wanna, you know, have the surface on your board. Uh, we're gonna give this a, just a little bit of a quick roll, and then we're gonna put it in the fridge while we finish up everything else that goes in it. So it's floured it, put my dough in the middle. We're not really, you know, it's not, we're not eating this like you would eat bread. We're just sort of bringing it together into a ball making sure everything is all evenly distributed in this case there's little chunks of butter or sugar or what have you. So this looks good. It should be pretty smooth. Just make sure it's in a nice ball of dough. And then you can take this dough if you didn't want to use it today. You can keep this in the fridge for up to, I'd say, three days. Um, I don't know if I would freeze it because the texture will be weird. You want to freeze it because of um, the butter in there. But 
So, spin the these plastic wraps, come up, or it's all covered, roll it up, make sure you don't have any pieces sort of sticking out of it, and we're gonna put this in the fridge for at least 25, 30 minutes, and we will come back for it later. So, there you have it, there you go. We're now gonna switch to the next, uh, our next recipe, the we're gonna start making the filling or the sort of topping for our for our tart. But first, give my hands a quick rinse. Okay. How is everybody doing? Is there are there people who are cooking along? Don't be shy. I take that as a yes. I'm gonna take that as a. I'm so busy cooking that I can't answer you. So I'm just gonna split my board. And um, you see a couple of people are trying to catch up a little bit. Don't worry, we have plenty of time. Um, so one, uh, so I'm just gonna, one of my favorite ways to celebrate any holiday is really through like the food. It's not just about uh, celebration. It's not just about limits. It's about cooking and eating and, you know, apples and honey are great, but sometimes, you know, a honey cake is great too, but sometimes you want something a little bit different, right? You wanna like play around with your flavors. So, um, I, mean, I love to sort of match like sweet and savory things. So that's where I came up with this idea of let's do a caramelized onion, which is like a little bit sweeter than apples, which are very traditional, but let's do it in a savory way. And I feel like the goat cheese kind of brings this uh, all together. So, um, it's in a pan. You want something with like at least, you know, a little bit of a whip at least so that you're gonna put a lot in here and you don't want it to sort of overflow. You also want something with like a big surface area. Um, more surface area means the more heat. It means the more evenly cook on all sides and not just in one part of the pan. So, you need, so you need a big pan. Um, this is like a large one. And we're gonna start by caramelizing, doing like a quick caramelized onion. Now there's a million different ways that people do this. Some people say put it with sugar and literally caramelize it, like with almost like making a caramel. Some people say they do it in slow cooker. Some people say put it in a Dutch oven and make it in the oven and sort of stir it every hour. Um, that's fine. You know, if you have a lot of time, um, patience, great. This will get you caramelized onions in much less time. The secret is you take your onions. So I'm going to take an onion. I'll show you how I cut it. And you want to. You want to start them in the pan, dry. I know it's not weird. You say, are the onions going to burn? Um, how are they going to caramelize? If you put them in the dry pan, the natural, the natural sugars in, in the onion will start to cook and they will start to caramelize on their own and brown. And once they start browning, then you can add, you know, things like oil or butter or sugar if you want. So I just I just took, cut off the top and bottom of my onion. I feel that this is a uh, this is just like a, a regular um, Spanish onion, nothing fancy. And I just cut it and I'm just gonna cut it in half. And then I'm gonna sort of make little slices, almost all the way through, but not 100% so that it stays covered. So that way, when I slice down, it gives me pieces of onion and not just like one big slice. And then you can cut through the almost cut slices you did before. This is the same sort of method I might use if I was dicing, except that I would like go this way too, and this way. So do it again, I'll show you if this is gonna go almost all the way through, almost all the way through, and then I'm gonna cut from the top. And that way I'll have more chopped up pieces. If you were doing fajitas, you don't need to necessarily do it this way. You can keep everything in a larger slices. But because we want things to cook faster, um, we cut them so that they're a little bit more distinct layers. And from the magic of the television, I happen to have more onions already sliced. And I'm just gonna put them, to turn the heat on to medium, my pan, and I'm just gonna put all of my onions in. It looks like a lot, it is. It was about at least three or four onions, but it's gonna cook down a lot. So I'm just gonna put these on here. No oil, no butter, no anything. Another person has come in. 
how are people doing who are cooking? I want to check in on you. I know that before, um, Emily, you were you were talking you were talking about you were trying to catch up with the dough. How's it going? Do we have dough, or do we have onions? Quick question: Do you store your onions in the fridge or outside of the fridge? Um, I store my onions outside of the fridge, unless I'm going to unless they've already like been cut. I think when you put them in the when you put them in the fridge, it lessens the odor a little bit and it stops the oxidation process a little bit. So some people like to do that so you don't cut. Um, so you don't, uh, when you're cutting them, you don't cry as much. But um, I think a better idea is if you have a gas stove, you can just turn on the gas a little bit and that will also stop them from oxidizing and, uh, and that will keep you from crying. But I think, you know, I, I wouldn't put onions in the fridge unless they're already cut or something. Um, I mean, or unless you think you're gonna need it for months. The onion pan is not preheated. You want the you want the onions to sort of come up to temperature at the same time as you're doing them. Uh, you can just turn it a little bit. Just, if you have a non-stick pan, I would recommend using that. But either way, it's not going to make a difference. After the onions are nice brown, we are going to we're going to deglaze them. So even if you don't have non-stick, you're totally fine. Um, in the recipe, it has us taking the apples and adding them to the same pan as the onion later on, which is fine. But I think if you have another pan, um, I am gonna like pre I'm gonna start earlier on the apples, and I'm gonna start cooking them in another pan just to save time. It's all gonna go together later on, and I'm just giving you the rough chop. They don't need. It doesn't matter what size you do. It's whatever you like. If you like slices, do slices. If you like chunks, do chunks. If you want to cheat and buy the already sliced apples um, in the store, also perfectly fine. I do that all the time. Uh, save you time. You can also skip the apples if you want. Just make this a caramelized onion and go to start. That would be great. You can do this with um, other kinds of cheese. You can, uh, without cheese. Um, does everybody like caramelized onions? I feel like it's usually yes, but you never know. I'm just chopping off parts of this apple. I'm using Granny Smith. I like the sort of sour taste that you get from the skin, specifically. And I keep my skin on my apples. Uh, there's a lot of vitamins in there. But you can feel free to peel them. You can use an apple core. Uh, dried apple. Apples. So through the apples, I am gonna add a little bit of olive oil to this pan. The apples have a lot of liquid in them and a lot of sugar is like turning on the surface. They even see the burn very fast. So I'm gonna show you my onions are already starting to brown a little bit. You can sort of see some of the edges. They're not I think it's burning us because we have, to, we have to stir them pretty frequently. But they're starting to uh, sweat a little bit. Everybody know, does everybody know why we call we cook vegetables in the pan and just start steaming and sweating? It's because they're sort of like, they're almost like at a cooking gym. You go to the gym, you, uh, you go to the gym, right? And you work out, you start to sweat, you start to smell a little bit. Same thing with your vegetables. So I'm just adding my apples to my pan. You don't have, you could wait and just do them with the onion too. I just think that they'll eat up the process a little bit. No seasoning on the apples yet. Just, just doing a little bit of, and give my onion another stir. You'll notice that the ones at the bottom that are on the edges of the pan are going to start to brown a little bit. The whole thing is going to start to soften. So if you felt like, oh, you didn't chop them small enough, or just sort of clunk, 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 clinging stuff together, you, uh, it'll break apart. Don't worry. Okay. And 
Once more of the onions are starting to brown, and you're gonna deglaze it with our apple cider vinegar. You can feel free to make some substitutions with this dough. If you don't like the tang of vinegar, you can feel free to use maybe a closer look. You can feel free to use um, maybe red wine or white wine. You can use marsala and make this sort of like a fancy marsala on your dish. You can use white vinegar and apple juice or apple cider. That would be really fun, very fall inspired way. You know, especially if you wanted to make this combo and uh, eat it by itself or eat it with lockers and pasta or uh, have it on uh, some grilled chicken. The possibilities are endless. So for those of you who are cooking along with us, how are you doing? Are we, do you, do you need a few minutes? Are you at your onions yet? Let's know. Well, apples will be in the cup in the preliminary stages, but this is why you would use something like a grain snack or maybe a back and stuff. Something you want an apple with heft. Um, if you use something like a golden delicious or, um, you know, like a big lady apple or something that doesn't, if it gets a little too soft, they're going to disintegrate quickly. I like a little more chunk in my combo. You can sort of see the onions are browning a little bit more. Um, they're starting to all turn a golden brown color. You'll be able to start smelling them. You probably need another couple of minutes before we add our traditional caramelized onion accoutrements, as they call them. So, to our apples, which are also on medium, by the way, I'm going to add some other, um, some of our other spices that are going to then go into the into the onions after. So I'm going to add um, a little bit of ginger, about let's say like two tablespoons fresh, or you can also use dried, but you have to be less for dried and fresh because uh, it's more concentrated. But you know, you can just go with you know what you know what you know. Different, different like varieties, especially if you buy the sort of the tubes or the jars of mixed ginger, have different strength levels. I would just like give it a little taste. I know it seems a little weird, raw ginger, but you can taste it to sort of see where it's at, and that will uh, help you know how much you want to give or not. Um, I'm also going to add uh, a little bit of sugar to the apples. I know this kind of seems counterintuitive because apples are already sweet. But it's not exactly about caramelizing the apples. You're gonna, if you add a little bit of sugar, it's gonna help the juices that are coming out of the apples in the pan sort of form a little bit of more of like a glaze. And when we add the it, it should help bring everything uh, together. So um, we're gonna add, I'd say it's split it up about half of the brown sugar. So I'm gonna do half a cup now, and then I'm gonna do the other half when we sort of marry the two pans together. And just doing a packed cup, which just means that you're pushing the brown sugar down um, and measuring it because uh, brown sugar tends to sort of like clump up a lot and make food if you want to be more accurate when you push it down first. So I'm gonna the brown sugar right into the pan, and you're gonna just notice it's gonna start melting right away, and you're gonna start coating the apple in it. You can um, you can do this with honey, if you want or agave, but I think brown sugar has a little bit of a, a nuttier taste. Brown sugar is just regular sugar that has molasses also in it, and so light brown sugar has less of it than dark brown sugar. So you see the onions are starting to maybe really start to out. So. And there. Now, now would be the time that you add. Now would be the time to add your butter to your to your. So we're gonna add about 
Your voice is cutting out a bit. Maybe it's because you turned on the exhaust, so it's uh, knocking the sound out. What? I think because you put the exhaust on, it's sort of knocking the sound out a bit. I apologize. Is it better? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Go for it. So I was just saying, I just put my butter into my pan. So, um, so we're just gonna keep letting that cook a little bit, and they're gonna keep browning, and. In about 30 seconds, show you my onions. We're going to heat glaze with apple cider vinegar. It's not just for drinking anymore. So you want to do about half a cup, uh, and when you heat glaze, you're just using liquid to pick up. Um, sort of bits and pieces, which are very flavorful from the bottom of the pan. So we're just going to go around one, just so you can need to do that. And it will sort of, you'll start to smell it, it'll get very musky. And you just use your spoon or your spatula, just to scrape the bottom a little bit with the liquid, mix it all around. All of that bits on the bottom of the, of the pan are flavor bombs, they're concentrated flavor. So this helps with that. And also the liquid will start to evaporate a little bit and it will really bring your onions together. Um, it'll, that with the apple and the sugar will sort of give it a, a sort of gooey consistency that a lot of parents like onions have, where it's not, it has a little bit of liquid, but it's not exactly the sauce. You want to let it keep the coming together, softening and getting a little more loosey-goosey as everybody hangs out together in the pot. And, now I'm going to take my apples, add them to my, to my onions. Use an apple, it's okay. You can do this, you want more apples, you can chop up another apple and make this much more apple -y. You want more onions or only onions, that's okay. I've even done this once with pears and like Gruyere cheese. Very delicious, very, almost like a play on like onion soup. Everything together. Do we need to slow down a little bit? I don't want anyone to get lost in the shuffle. This is what your this is what your onion apple mixture should essentially look like. And we're just gonna let this simmer for another few minutes while we get some of our other additions um, ready. So I like to add a little bit of thyme, dry thyme. I think it's very nice with like onion and goat cheese. Um, and you can also add some rosemary. You can add whatever spices you want. You can add garlic to this. Um, although I don't always add garlic, even though I love it because I feel like sometimes it will compete flavor-wise with some of the other ingredients. Um, one dish, the one addition that I would 100% do, and I, I mean, not that it's, I guess you don't have to, but I think if you're having apples, I don't know how you can not have it, is cinnamon. I feel like apple's best friend is cinnamon. I think might not be on the medium list for this recipe. I know it was for another one. I like to add some cinnamon to this, I feel like this makes apples more happily. It may give me a taste of the holidays. So how much cinnamon was that? I put in half a tablespoon. Okay. I, start with a tea. I just know what my family likes. I would start with a teaspoon, see how you like it. I wouldn't go past the tablespoon. I would go past the tablespoon because it might start to taste a little too like floral or medicinal. And that would just be that would just be worse. Um, and I would just keep sauteing my mixture. You want the onions to clean the brown. You want them to start marry with the apples. 
I'll give you a little. Okay. You said half a tablespoon, right? I use half a tablespoon, yeah. Okay, so that's one and a half teaspoon, so it's not that uh, different. Use, yeah, and, and you can, if you're adventurous, you can even take a cinnamon stick and you can sort of like put it in there to steep. Um, but just make, if you do that, make sure you take it out, obviously, before you, uh, before you eat it. And what was in the squeeze bottle? That was your ginger? Yeah, so I, you know, I sometimes I cheat and I just buy like the already ginger. Um, you can use fresh um, and sort of chop it up. If you do, then the easiest way to peel a novel ginger is to use a pack of a spoon. And then you can sort of scrape it towards yourself to get the skin off. Um, you can also use dry ginger, but if you're going to use dry, you just usually need to use that half um, for some stretch because it's a little more potent. Some of the some of the jars or like the ginger that you might find like in the refrigerated section is pretty strong because they also add like preservatives to it. Um, so I would just start tasting it to see how strong it is before you before you add it. You'll know like you're giving. You'll know what your cup of water is. The only thing I'm doing now is I'm adding the other half of my brown sugar that I didn't add before, and I'm going to add uh, my lemon juice. We do about a tablespoon of lemon juice. You know, fresh is obviously you know great, but. Not all of us have fresh lemon juice, fresh lemon. So lemon juice from a container is perfectly fine. Uh, and that will also give you even more of the And you want there to be enough liquid that it's moving around the pan, it's not sticking, uh, kind of spurting, but you don't want it to be, we're not making apple onion soup. If you accidentally add too much, um, you can, that's okay to just keep it on the stove a little longer to reduce it. Or worst case scenario, you can add a little bit of cornstarch to water or flour, like a tablespoon to a tablespoon of each, and just mix it together until it forms like a slurry. And then you would add that to your pan and that would thicken it up again. Um, so this is almost done. Say maybe another minute or so, and then I'm gonna turn the heat off. Oh, I forgot to add my salt. You want to add maybe about a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of salt. You want to add your salt towards the end because when you add salt to things, it makes them release their moisture in their liquids. And if you added it too early, then the onions would start to steam uh, instead of caramel. You add it just the flavor at the end. And you don't necessarily need to add too much because goat cheese has a little bit of salt in the tank. This looks great. Let me give you another sort of peek at what it looks did like. You the, did you forget the rosemary or did you want to leave it out? Uh, I'm not taking the rosemary because my, um, my family needs it. But I love, if I was making this at home, I would leave it. I put thyme in though. Um, rosemary just has like, uh, thyme has a little bit of sort of a lemony. Um, fresh taste to it. Rosemary is much more earthy. It'll bring out some of the, the like more savory elements of the of the of the onions and the apples. I'm also going to be using. Um, I'm actually using a, a goat cheese that has like herbs um, on it. So it's already seasoned, so I'm not super worried about skipping the rosemary now because it has like pretty good herbs um, in it. So I guess it's a little bit of a... I thought the salt like helps things to sweat. So like if you put the salt in earlier, what what, what did you say would happen? If you're just sauteing vegetables, where you're like making a stir fry, or you have fajitas or something, you want to add the salt early. When you're caramelizing onions, I mean, I like to add the salt later because exactly what you're saying. When you add salt to things, it makes them, especially if supposed to make them release their, their, their moisture, the water in them. And if you did that with the onions early, then it would, then, then the onions would start to steam a little bit because they release their, they're, they're releasing water and they'll start to cook sort of like in that water, the liquid that it's releasing. And then we'll have onions that are more like steamed as opposed to getting some of that little crispy and sort of browned edges that you that are great in caramelized onions. Does that make sense? If you did salt it earlier, it'll still taste fine. I just think texture-wise, 
I like to salt it a little bit later. Specifically for specifically for caramelized onions. It's like it would be different for like another type of dish. Like if you were maybe even if you were like doing stew or soup or some sort of base for like chicken or something. Um, but yeah. Um, are people, how are people doing with your onions or your apples? Are you okay if I move, if I take out my dough? Just so I can show you, I want to. You can leave the dough in a little longer if you wanted to. But for me, I'm just going to start it now. And I'm just gonna roll it out. I'm gonna do this sort of free form on my cheat can. So I'm gonna preheat my oven, by the way, to 400 degrees. I'm gonna take cartridge over. Line. Baking sheet. And if you want, you can use a tart pan, you can use a you can use a pie pan. I would just so for every for every quarter inch of depth, you need to add another five to seven minutes. Um, because like if it's deeper then it's gonna take longer. So that's, but that's totally fine. I'm actually not even gonna use a tart pan. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna roll this out on my board and then I'm gonna transfer it straight to my baking, my you know, baking sheet. And it's gonna be sort of free form. I kind of like the, the sort of oblong shape. I think it's rustic and gives it, I mean, a tart pan or a pipe, it just makes it look fancy, but I don't need that. This is like a very homey type of dish. If you wanna, Make sure that you flour your, your board or whatever your work surface is, flour the tart dough a little bit, flour your rolling pin. Uh, and just sort of roll from top to bottom, from the inside out. You want it to be equal equal thinness all around. And if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a, uh, a bottle of wine. Um, that's totally fine, or a bottle of other alcohol, or even like a a can with a very large can from something. Uh, if it was heavy. I'm gonna roll this out into maybe like quarter to a half an inch thick. Not, doesn't need to be perfect. You just want it to be pretty equal size. And then I'm just gonna roll this up on my rolling pin. And I'm gonna take this, lift it up. Put right it onto my sheet pan. This will make, you know, this will feed six to eight people. I think it's, I like the sort of rustic style of this. And if it, you know, if you found you've chilled your dough a lot, you can feel free to sort of put your hands on it a little bit and that will loosen it up. You can also put the plastic on to stretch it out a little bit. If you don't have a rolling pin, rolling pin, you can use the plastic wrap you wrap your dough in. Lay it on top of it and then just sort of stretch it with your hands. That will stop your the warmth from your hands from sort of melting the butter that's inside. So this is my dough. I like the sort of like oblong uh, shape, just who I am. I imagine maybe if I was doing it for an event or for a client who would order it, I would use a tart pan or uh, I would do the whole thing, but this is just us together in the kitchen. And so I'm gonna take my, my cooked cheese, you can get cheddar. What's the difference of a tart pan to the cookie sheet? What? What what would what is the difference of a tart pan for what you're using? Um, a tart pan usually is um, has like fluted edges um, and it often has like a removable bottom. So like if you wanted a fancy edge, you would lay it out and you would sort of you could push it into the crevices and you would get that sort of lovely uh, little dome almost, fluted edges on the side. And then it all, a lot of the time it comes with like a removable bottom. So like after it's cooked, you would like push up from the middle and the, 
tart would stay on a metal sheet, but the side uh, container piece would come off, and then it's easy to to then put it onto a platter or something like that. Um, you can get like rectangular ones, which are like very traditional sort of like Frenchy French. You can get round ones, which are people use a lot for like quiche or like crust with quiche, um, or like if you ever had like a tomato pie. Um, I I don't necessarily if I'm at home I don't necessarily feel the need to be super fancy. Uh, my family will eat anything. Well, not anything, but mostly anything. Uh, I just I just took some of the goat cheese, uh, and this is I bought one that has like garlic and herb. I think it's like just an extra layer of flavor, and I'm just spreading it uh, on the bottom of my dough. If you take it out a little earlier, you can. It's more spreadable. This is gonna a um, give this just another layer of flavor. B, you're also going to it's gonna have a base for the onion apple mixture to sit on, and it'll and so it won't be directly onto the dough, and it won't create that sort of pockets of moisture as this will absorb it. What's and the other type of cheese you mentioned? The chevet? Chev, it's just another. I mean, so goat cheese and chev are essentially the same thing. Chev is uh, a French is a French name for it, and there is, it's usually creamier. Goat cheese is a little more crumblier. They're essentially the same thing. Um, almost most American versions of cheddar are, are goat cheese. Um, and I also don't know if there are a lot of, there's not really a lot of kosher versions of chef. There are many delicious varieties of kosher goat cheese. So this doesn't have to be perfect. Just pushing it out. I like to leave a little bit of a border so that part of it will uh, rise up a little bit. Um, as it cooks. Can I just ask you a question? Um, as lovely as this is, I, I have taken grains out of my diet and flour, and I was just wondering if you've ever experimented with um, like an almond and, you know, other kind of grain-free uh, flour for a crust, yeah. uh, if you've played around with that, because I haven't quite mastered the baking with almond flour yet. Um, I mean, I'm working on it, but I'm just wondering if you've played around with that. I've used I've used many different varieties of gluten-free flour. I'm just gonna start to spread my dough while we're talking. Um, almond flour is tricky. You have to be very precise because it's not, because it's, 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 it's very finicky. Um, and if you use too much of it, it gets really mealy. If you use too little of it, it's like, like eating like dirt. Um, so if you're gonna go for gluten-free route, I like the gluten-free, but they have the gluten-free flour mixes. You can find them at a lot of supermarkets now, but if not, there's probably the whole food journey order on Amazon. It often has like a mixture of a chickpea flour or amaranth flour or different varieties. Um, I think those work really well. I think you just you need to use a version that's specifically for like baked goods. You need to use one-to-one -one versions. There's a lot of flours where, especially with almond or other kind of nut flours, where it's not one-to-one. -one. They're like, oh, okay, it's only really one-third. That's not good. It's very hard for, there are versions that work really well, but it's very hard to do that. I think if you're going to bake, you want to use a one-to-one -one version, and that's what will get you your best results. Like it'll take, it'll, it'll taste with the same it'll, it'll taste well, and also have a spread texture and everything like that. Um, but I do, you know, I do a dessert that one of my clients like with a sort of like a crumb bar, and I do it often with. I use gluten-free flour. Sometimes I use uh, rice flour mm. and like a shortbread crust. And it works fine. You just you have to sort of find the right one that works. And those are those I did do, but I find I need to even not do the rice and the other stuff. Um, so you know, it's down to the almond and coconut, and you know, and it's just it's just going to take some time. Is really what it is for me to figure it out. And, and you know, there are a lot of great recipes online, and you know, but I always like a great recipe like this, and I want to adapt it. You know what I mean? And so I have to figure out a way to do it. So I would start by using the the already pre blended gluten free mix. See how that turns out, and then I would test like I would test flours that they use in like other cuisines a lot. Like in, they use a lot of chickpea flour in like Indian cooking. And they make like their like parathas or a lot of their breads with that. I would see how that works out for you because then you can sort of get an idea. Almond flour is like a generally newer to like a lot of cooking. Yeah. And that I think would take a little more experimentation. Yeah. I mean, I make you know I can do you know scones and muffins and things like that, but I just. <laughs> You know, I mean, this tart is so gorgeous, right? You know, you want to... <laughs> I just I put a little bit of a border so it pops up a little bit. And now I'm just going to start crumble goat cheese on top. 
and as it bakes, it's going to sort of melt a little bit. Um, so what you can use, uh, you can do this with ricotta. And like if you have like maybe tomatoes in your garden or something, or a farmer's market, you can cook the, you can do caramelized onion, you can put tomatoes with it, or you can do like, a, you know, it's a lovely to do sort of like, like zucchini or squash. I think this feel like, for me, if I got this, I wrote the I'd be, dinner I'd be having. Um, the, the dessert that we're gonna do right after this goes in the oven is, uh, I'm gonna talk about some um, stuff you could do, especially for like gluten-free. So um, I don't know if you like desserts. Tell it. <laughs> oh, I hate them. Start our caramelized onion and apple tart free oven. And, uh, you know what? It does look pretty. I'm gonna take a picture. Because if you didn't take pictures, then it really even happen, right? <laughs> and I preheated the oven to 400 degrees. I'm gonna put this in. We're gonna take it out. 30 to 40 minutes. So we're going to get actually a bottom wrap because, because there's all these things on top of it. Um, it's weighing it down a little bit. I'm going to make sure it cooks to the bottom up. So that is that done. And I am just going to, two seconds, raise it for rearrange a little bit. Put some stuff in the fridge. And also, I want to check in on our cooks in progress. Oh, thanks, Neil. See, this is why the chat works. Um, yeah, you can just, I mean, you can, if you don't like a lot of cinnamon, you can do a little bit less. You can also add, um, sometimes when I do this, and especially if I do it in a savory dish, to the compote, I'll add a little bit of Dijon mustard. I love how the it gives it a little bit of emulsification and a little bit of a little bite. I think I sort of love the little bite from the Dijon with the sweetness of the apples. But it's very, very customizable. It doesn't have to be one way fits all. Um, you know, maybe you, you maybe you don't like apples, you can do pears, or you can do summer fruit. You can do some sort of a combo, you can do like uh, plums, like plums and shallots. Very, uh, very bold. Right? Um, so, I'm gonna assume that means, uh, Emily, that you are uh, that you're towards the end of your your combo, right? I think you're you're busy at work in the in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start making the batter for the for the apple fritters. Mm. So this is a recipe I adapted. I originally made a recipe a couple years ago for these little pumpkin donuts, little pumpkin drop donuts. And they were like very fall. And um, so I wanted to make like a pumpkin dessert that wasn't pumpkin pie. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Everybody loves pumpkin pie. But this is a little bit different. And so we're actually gonna fry, fry these on the stove, but you can, um, you can certainly bake these. I would, I'll, and I'll tell you how to do that later on. Um, and I like, if I do that, I like to use like a little mini muffin pan because it makes sure that they don't expand too much um, and stay the sort of same size as you like before. Um, and uh, here comes our, yeah, it's, uh, we've had, not quite a hurricane, but we've had a lot of heavy rain and tornado warnings here in New York as well. So yeah. I think we're, we're still lucky to some of the other places. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't been, uh, if you haven't been rained out of class yet, um, so we're gonna fry these and we're gonna toss them. Um, I like, you could do regular cinnamon sugar, very traditional, very delicious. I like to sort of pick it up a little bit. I'm gonna use a little bit of Chinese five spice, which is a, a it is actually a blend of spices. It usually has uh, cinnamon, um, sometimes Szechuan peppercorns, it has cardamom, it has sometimes lavender, it has um, it's a, a couple of other spices depending on what blend you get. And you can buy it, it's like a powder, it's really great with anything that needs that sort of almost pumpkin spice type flavor. It has allspice, ginger, you know, it really goes well with a lot of fall dishes. And I think it really goes well with apples because a lot of these same spices are what you might find in an apple pie. So, we, you need a bowl. You're gonna need, if you're gonna fry, you need some sort of a pot or a Dutch oven that has a little bit of depth to it. You can try to shallow pan fry these if you might want this. 
if you have to be really vigilant about it though. Um, you can also bake them. And you can also you add double the baking powder of what we're gonna add if you want to bake it. Because the baking powder is what helps it uh, rise. Baking soda, fluffiness, baking powder, that's the rest. So I'm gonna fill this pan. I'm just gonna use canola oil. You can use vegetable oil, you can use corn oil, you can use avocado oil as a high burning temperature. Just not olive oil or sesame oil or anything. You need something with a neutral <clears throat> high burning temperature. Alright. Do a couple inches in the table a little bit in case I need to fill up some more. I think I heard someone maybe starting to ask a question. No? All right, I'm gonna put this in, but I'm gonna not turn it on yet because I'm gonna give time for, for our uh, our chefs to, to catch up. Uh, this is just, you want about like, eight, at least two minutes of oil in your pan. If you're, if you're taking a bowl, whatever that is, I think the news on in the background, you can, uh, yourselves. Great, thank you. Um, so we're gonna add dry ingredients to the bowl. So we're gonna add our flour. So I'm using, again, I'm using all-purpose flour, but you can certainly use clean tree flour. You can use, the only flour I like to stay away from is uh, whole wheat flour, because it gets very gummy often, and with something like this, you don't want it to sort of like, super gummy, like doughy in the middle. So almond flour would actually be really great in substitution in this recipe, and then you can keep it gluten-free uh, as well. And then you can also get a, um, you can check your uh, label for your baking powder. Sometimes they're gluten-free, oftentimes you'd have to make a substitution. You can buy some gluten-free baking powder mixes already. You can also, um, you can also hack it, and then, I believe, it. I don't know the exact measurements, but there's a way to sort of create your own baking powder. Um, version um, and it works great. So for the almond flour, would you, it looked like you did uh, two cups there. Would you do two cups for almond? Yeah, yeah. one to one. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And you, so after you add your flour, then you would add your uh, baking powder and you're also gonna add your, we're gonna add brown sugar and we're gonna add salt and cinnamon. Oh, you cinnamon with make another appearance. So we're doing two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. With the with the tart dough and with the mix, I wasn't as precise with my measuring because it can take it. Even the tart the tart dough is pretty flexible, but like with something like something like this, it especially when you're frying, it needs to be pretty exact. It's not as with cooking, you can be a little more uh, from, you know sort of experimental with your measurements. But with baking, if you mix something, until you're, until you've made a recipe a million times, if you try to experiment with it, sometimes it'll just like, you know, like if you put too much of something, you put not enough of something else, all of a sudden you have like, you know, dust in the bottom of your pan, or you have like, nothing happened, like, oh, how come that didn't work? And you're like, what's really right? It's probably because you didn't measure things. You just added a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of salt. Salt lets you taste a lot of the other ingredients, and it acts as a stabilizer in a lot of baking mixes. Um, so you might think it's counterintuitive to add salt to something sweet, but you need to have a little bit. You're not going to taste it, but you'll know if it's not there. Um, and then I'm going to add a third of a cup of brown sugar packed. So I'm just going to add this. And just packed again just means that you're taking brown sugar and you're pushing it down so it fills all the little crevices. So you know it's exactly or not like really a quarter plus a cup of cake or something. So once I've added all of these dry ingredients, remember it's got our flour, baking powder, brown sugar, salt, and cinnamon. It's gonna, you know, sort of beat up any sort of big clumps of brown sugar. It clumps up because of the molasses that's mixed throughout. You just give it a mix with a whisk. Um, you just want to mix it enough that everything is homogenous. You don't want to see any clumps or chunks of sugar or just baking powder or salt. Everything should just be, be mixed. You can, um, you can use a sifter 
that's like uh, that will really ensure that you definitely have no uh, little pieces and everything is thoroughly mixed. But for this kind of recipe, I don't know if it's necessary. If we were making like a very delicate cake or something, then that's a different issue. So these are dry ingredients. In another bowl, which I have right here, if you don't have another bowl, um, it will be okay if you just add it directly to your dry ingredients. The reason you do them separately is so that there are no lumps um, or everything, everything stays smooth and formed. So if you have another bowl, I would do it. I would use it. If you don't have another bowl, that's okay. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna add our egg. So where'd the egg go? Right here. I'm just gonna crack my egg into another bowl. This is just in case I get chill in it or there's blood in the egg, which means it's not kosher. Um, this egg looks fine, so I'm gonna add it into my bowl. Um, but you can do whatever you want at home. If you don't wanna add the egg to the bowl, it's fine. I know it makes a mess, especially if you don't have a dishwasher. And uh, I'm adding about a cup of applesauce. Um, I had hoped to get chunky, but I couldn't find. If you make your own, amazing. Um, if not, you, I'm just using, you know, classic, classic, you know, from the supermarket. Any brand is fine. We're gonna add a cup of applesauce. You can even, a uh, great idea is to take dried apples and sort of rehydrate them. And, you know, you can rehydrate them in water, but you can also rehydrate them in lemon or ginger ale or brandy or whatever your favorite alcoholic salt beverages. And once they're rehydrated, you can judge them up in the, in the blender or in the food processor. So whatever consistency you like. So I just mixed the one egg plus a cup of applesauce. And we're also gonna add milk. So you can use regular milk, you can use um, creamer, you can use uh, almond milk, oat milk, what have you. So I'm gonna add three tablespoons of milk directly to this. One, two, three. Okay. This, if you are using something like, I don't want to do a cap. If you are using something like creamer, uh, like for your like coffee creamer, something that's like thicker like that, I don't know, it's gone forever. Uh, I would, is it under the recipe sheets? What? Is the cap under the recipe sheets? How your fist? No, it's okay. I'll, it's over I'll, there. That's it. why I usually, when it, when it's, oh, it's right in front of my face. Um, oh, I was saying that uh, if you're using a thicker liquid, like a heavy cream or something, or a coffee creamer, add an extra half a tablespoon um, to, balance it, to balance it out. But if you're using any sort of milk variety, it's three tablespoons. And then, we are going to add, we're going to take our remaining, oh, so we had a sandwich like butter before. We need uh, two tablespoons of butter or margarine, which is about an eighth of a cup or a quarter of a stick of butter. So I'm just going to, this has already been softened because it's sitting out. Otherwise, pop it in the microwave for like 10 or 15 seconds at a time until it's softened enough. You use unsalted, right? Yes, this is unsalted. Um, if you add salted, it's not the end of the world. Your, uh, your dessert might have a little bit of a salted taste to it. Maybe delicious if you want to add it with a have it with like caramel or like a salted caramel type feel. But unsalted is best for, for this. You also don't know what the what the salt in the butter might do to the to the, the chemistry of the recipe. So I just added that, and I'm going to add my um, my vanilla. I have a teaspoon of vanilla. I know it smells really good, and sometimes you might want to put a lot extra. I would resist the urge to put more than a teaspoon or so of vanilla. It's very strong. If you add too much of it, your dish is going to taste like perfume and not such as donuts. And also, you intentionally did not try to taste the vanilla by itself. It does not taste good. But uh, definitely give it a smell, though. You always use the pure vanilla. Um, you can use pure vanilla is the best. You can use uh, vanilla extract. You can use imitation vanilla from the supermarket. It'll still give you the same flavor. 
pure vanilla, you'll taste a little more. If you're very, if you're very committed to fresh vanilla flavor, you can even take vanilla pods, which are like the long, the, the vanilla beans. So the vanilla pods are what come in the vanilla bean. But you'll, you would take a vanilla bean from the store, and you would cut it. You would take a very sharp knife, cut it down the middle, just so it's supposed to have. And then you use the blade of the knife, and you sort of scrape the inside out. And that's how you would use uh, vanilla bean. But you can also just take, you, if you, once you cut it down the middle, don't scrape it out, but put your, about like maybe three or four, at least of the vanilla bean in vodka. And in like four weeks, you'll have your own vanilla extract. And you can continue adding vanilla beans to it like every every couple of months and like extend it for like, so people have it for years. It's a very, very like delicious vanilla taste. Um, Okay, so we are now going to take our wet ingredients and add it to our dries. If you add it directly into the dries, um, that would be the time for you to start mixing. You can use a hand mixer for this, but I think it's, it's not really that much in it that a whisk is fine. Um, if you were doing this as the pumpkin donuts, I think I accidentally left the, to add the pumpkin puree into this. Um, you would, you could, the hand mixer might be better because it's like a little thicker. But we just want to mix this. You don't want to like go crazy with it. You just want to mix it until it's well blended. Everything is like incorporated. You're going to see sort of it's going to almost get this sort of cake batter consistency. That's what you want. Um, Did you need to add the white sugar or that Chinese spice? So that's going to come later. Okay. So we're going to mix white sugar, granulated sugar, and the Chinese side spice. Or you could just mix it with cinnamon if you want to traditional. And that's what we're going to toss our hot, like warm donuts when they come out. We're going to toss that in that sort of sugar mixture, and that will coat the donut. It'll be, you can also make a sauce for this, or you can serve it. You can buy store bought caramel, or you can mix a little apple cider with some caramel or, or some, with some powdered sugar and make like a glaze. It'd be delicious. So this is our batter. We're going to let this sit for a minute while we give some people a chance to catch up. Um, for those of you who are cooking right now, where, where are you at? I'm also going to give you a peek at, at the tart. So it's not fully cooked yet, but you see the edges are sort of starting to come together, browning a little bit, the goat cheese is starting to melt a little bit. I'm going to just, I'm going to actually rotate this. And put back in the oven. And it'll keep cooking while we're doing. Quick question. Yeah. Um, the filling for my tart is kind of liquidy. Like I put a whole ha total of half cup apple cider vinegar. Should I just um, simmer it longer since I'm at altitude? Ah, okay. So there's a couple of options you can do. You can yes, you can simmer it longer. You can also you can always also feel free to use like a small spoon. Or like a, um, like the sort of thing you might use for like spaghetti, if you want to take the, the onion apple mixture but leave the liquid like, behind, or if you want a way to quickly thicken it up, you can um, take a, like a tablespoon of either cornstarch or flour and a tablespoon of water, like warm water, tap water, or something. Mix it in a little cup and then add that to your pan when it's, you know it's still simmering, and and that slurry will make it thicken up, will sort of make it become more gelatinous, and it will thicken it up quickly. Okay, thank you. And then one more question. You added salt to the onions at the beginning, and then am I adding a half teaspoon more salt? salt at the end. You did add it at the end. Okay. Yeah, I don't add, I don't like to add salt. I like to put the onions go in the pan. Yeah. Just onions in pan, no oil, no butter, whatever. Once the onions have browned a bit, and they're starting to like brown all over, then you add butter. I don't add the salt until later on. I add a little bit of salt to the apples. When you add the salt to onions, they release compared to anything, they release their moisture. Um, that's like when, that's also why like when we make a chicken, you know, roast chicken or something, we always salt the skin because it'll draw moisture out from the skin and it'll like crisp up. But we don't want that with caramelized onions because we want we want the onions to sort of brown and not and not and not steam or sweat um, in their own liquids that come out. But you just you just need to give it a little bit of time while you make it slurry and your uh, your sauce will will thicken up. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, so the batter is 
thickening up as it sits. We want to let it sit at least for a few minutes. You can do this right away, but if the longer you let it sit, the longer the glutens have to activate. For if you're doing this gluten-free, you can do it right away. It doesn't matter because there will be no glutens activated. But when you do use it, you want to let it activate because it'll yield you like a fluffier um, product when it's baked or fried. I'm gonna add my oil on the stove. I'm just gonna turn the knob without medium. And then once it gets at the temperature, I'm gonna drop it just a little bit, but not too much because as we drop in the batter, um, the temperature is gonna drop at the same time. To, to anybody else that's cooking, need help. Do you, are you, do you have a question? I actually, I actually have a question, and I'm unfortunately not cooking right now one day. Um, have you ever done this with like fresh apples? So that um, I know that you would obviously have to put in more of some kind of a liquid to make the consistency of the batter, but. Yeah, you can do this with fresh apples. Just if so, if you're, I wouldn't do more than like half of it of like the fresh apples. And even though I love the peels on an apple and something like this, I would peel them. Um, and then I would go for half of with a liquid that's more more viscous, like it's more liquidy than applesauce. So something like maybe you could do apple cider. You can do like a sparkling apple juice and that will sort of keep it even fun. And then it would make it a little puffier too. You yeah. know, the yeah. actual, uh, that would be fun. You can do a moss mulcher. You add a little bit of seltzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. It's the, you know, the effervescence tricks it into thinking that it's like needs to expand. And also I do um, flaxseed instead of the egg. Yeah, that's fine. You can do that or you can do um, you can do avocado um, as well, like mashed avocado. That's interesting. I haven't heard of that one yet. I know, you know, you can use hemp seed ground up or flax seed. Or... Yeah, just like, just avocado mashed up very, make sure it's very liquidy. Maybe even add a little bit of lemon juice to the avocado to make sure. And you can use that instead of the, instead of the egg as well. Cool. Um, if you were going to do that, I would, I would bake them. So, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. They're good bake too. Uh, when you bake them, do them at 400 degrees, spray the inside of like a mini muffin pan and you would sort of just scoop each one in um, and then rotate it halfway through. But we're going to, we're going to fry these. Check the foil, give it another minute. Um, who is, who is still cooking with us? Everybody, who's, are people on the, your batter? Are you still, are you bringing it back in your heart? Um, just give you a little peek. You can see there's sort of like bubbles starting to work better. So it's just expanding. It's like the same process as like making pala. And you guys get it popped up. If you like what's inside, you can see the little air that's popped up. The sauce pan is not on. I apologize. Thanks for making it down. Thank you for making it down. Can you hear me better now? Okay. I think the exhaust fan is what cuts the mic off. Yeah, it's uh, exhaust fan. Uh, there's a uh, hand on the fly outside. But anyway, we're going to take the batter and I'm going to move over here like so. I want everything to be like happening really quickly. And I'm gonna take a scoop, mini scoop. I think uh, there's a halfway with it. On the edge of the oil, it's starting to simmer a little bit. Do a little heat. And you can see it sort of bubbles a little bit on the edge. So I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna walk. And this one's starting to sizzle a little bit, but it's not loaded yet. So it means my oil is not yet hot. What else would you use that onion compote on if you weren't using it in the tart? Can you say that again? What else would you use that onion apple compote in if you weren't using it in the tart? What else would I put in the tart? What else would you use the apple tart and uh, oh, okay. the filling in if you weren't using it in the tart? Uh, so I love to do it. I like to butter, like toppings with like chicken. 
Uh, I also would like to thank the Canvas. Just like if I have any questions for Darren and Papa, uh, Darren. Total, totally missed your reply, Jonathan. Oh, I was saying sometimes I put it as like a topping, like a sauce for uh, chicken, like with chicken. Or sometimes I use it as a condiment in the Um Sometimes I use it as a topic of like a uh, Japanese or a chicken or a sauce. It's not done, but you see it started just sort of like, puffing up a little bit. And get bigger. Um, you can even just use it and have it with like a uh, sweet yogurt and make some like really good sour and then get it through it. And, uh, or you can just do it like by the people, have it with a uh, soap. I think I need mine for me to use it. The best way to use it. It's going to give you the, uh, the most bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. So, the fritters are small. They take like maybe half inch by certain spots. Like a tight brown. I'm going to take my stuffing for this. You can see that you can smell more. But, um, you can be able to do this like, like, you can also do this with very also doing camera phone calls. So we have to I don't know about anybody else, but I can't hear you at all, Jonathan. Is there any way to turn off the um fans? There's, unfortunately there's no way I don't know why it's off very well. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, that's why I think there's maybe like the air bulbs out. It's better. It's better also, when you're away from the uh, stove. All right, so I, that was just to give you a, I'm going to just take this out. So I did my little five bites of sugar. I took um, two tablespoons of five bites. So you can also use the chicken or curry powder or um, garam masala. Sugar by itself, and then I added half a cup of sugar, plain old magic. I can drop it by sugar. You can hear you can eat one by one, and you can do it a lot. You wait until there's not hot, but I can taste it. And I'll show you what it looks like while well, you just roll it around. And it comes out, and it's a, it almost looks like a little bunch of chips, like that, that's water, that's homemade. And I just slice it in half a little. And see that it's cooked almost like cake slices in the middle. To wait longer than I did, so that it will come back to temperature and have a little bit and another 30 seconds or so of water will cook. If you get it in the mouth, or if you get it in the mouth, like I've had it in the mouth, I've had it in the mouth. But you can eat these at day night. Also, wrap that in a plastic wrap with a cloth bag. Have them next day, next morning, and you'll actually last a few, two or three days if you wrap them in a plastic bag. By the third day, they might be able to uh, eat them without any problems. Okay, thank you. 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 I'm only dropping about four or five of them at once because I don't want to. I don't want to open up the pan. Really 
I also don't want to call it a temperature too much. I need a much temperature will drop and also it will go into the air and absorb oil as opposed to drying and cooking. Um, is it important, like, if you have like a little part that dripped in, to remove that so it doesn't, um, you know, so it doesn't burn and ruin the the next uh, batch? It depends on how much. Like, I have one. I thought it was like a little bit of my head, and I said that's okay because it's large enough that it will cook. If you add a little bit, you don't need to clean it out every time. I would say every two rounds. Like, I have like a spider, it's kind of like an almost mesh, and it's kind of like, it's really good for fried food, you can also use it for making the pasta out. But, um, uh, this is great if you can fry anything. Otherwise, you can use the water food, or, uh, organic food, the, uh, the sort of spaghetti food. And I don't know if that has to be the same pasta. But, I need to, so I want to make this food, like, because I care about you. And, uh, it's, uh, it's very dough, it's a little dough, it's a little dough, it's a little very, uh, like a very funny food, very nothing. And it has the sweet, but it's not, it also has a little bit of, like a, the basil for it, it's a little bit of a side type. I think it's a few, if you like the dessert food, it's sweet, stick with like, all the sugar or more, the sugar. If you want a little bit better, I would do it like this. Um, I will put it in the flip. It's great. So, I want to give you a peek at what the second batch looks like. Now, the oil is regulating temperature. You can see that the. Thank you. Yeah, I like these things. It's, uh, it's a little bit different where you can start to follow, like, the Indian blend. Uh, cooking with a little bit. Different than not like, you know, uh, You can find that in, Asia, in regular stores or only in Asian sure. stores? Um, I heard someone else will get these. No, you can get them at any, almost any supermarket now. Uh, I buy the fairway here because of the stop ride, the public. I think that would be okay. Is there star anise in there? Is that the. It depends on the pen. So even though all the five prices are not always the same five prices, there's almost always all sites of the earth. Often there's starnies, but that's not the one there is coriander. Um, the fact there's lavender, the fact that it's nice and warm that has some brown sauce, the one that's warm, the one that's warm. So you said so cardamom earlier, and I think cardamom yeah. would be delicious. It's just cardamom and cinnamon. Mine has, mine has cardamom. But it, it depends where you are. You'll find, you'll find more like the, um, of the coriander and and the corn is inside of the main market as opposed to the main market. I could need a little bit better. Very good. That looks perfect. Really puffed up. The first batch is always the first batch is always coming up with the guard for the water and the oil. So I would, I like to go straight from oil to white and have a little sugar mixture. You can also buy a stick for a minute and toss it in. Be more easy to make. But that's what I am. And cover it here. And I think I can do that. Well, we can it looks delicious. You're going to have to sacrifice yourself and taste that too? <laughs> I know. And, you know and somebody has to do it. You're taking one for the team. Taking one to the team. I'm doing, I'm doing it for the, I'm doing it for the people. But, um, for all the people. Uh, how are people, people who are coming along? Are you, do you have burgers? Are you having, um, you have 
um, batter. No pressure. If you feel like it, you can always uh, add the one to be able to go for the bike or you can feel free to look at that on social media. Jake's there to be helpful about. Um, can you put your email in the chat? I will put everything in the chat. I'm also going to send everyone to follow up. Thanks. Um, I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. I had actually fallen asleep. I, I, I thought that we started at 5.30 Eastern time. So I was here and then I went off to the oh. other room and I'm like, oh, I'm just shutting my eyes for a minute. You know how that goes. Um, well, luckily, we recorded the whole thing. So if you missed a little bit, we're going to be posting on our main page on the site. So I'm going to give you a watch. And we're going to be off. And I'm assuming, you, do, is your day job, are you working as a chef? Yeah, so I, um, I so basically is my uh, my day job. My company um, we do catering and meal delivery on uh, Brown Shark in Korea. We use some kind of filter than that, but uh, uh, we're kind of actually more to travel. Uh, so, but um, I cook every day. So these are some some of the recipes we make every day. I'm going to get into the holidays. Uh, it's me, Emily. Okay. So think of that. Yeah, you can make the exact same part and compare to the air. Um, which is you can even do something I think a monkey one comes with uh, uh with apples, or with Brussels sprouts, and um, with the whole thing like very funky. I thought it was really good. I've done I've done a version of this with um flare dog blood and like auto like this and auto. Um yeah, but, uh, Oh, I was saying you could definitely do it with pear and rear, especially combo. Um, I've done it with uh, it's a funky one with some sprouts and sushi and the apple. You can do it with whatever combo you love, like whatever combo you like, in like an omelet or a cheese um, or something. You can um, put it on the part, but you can also do it with like fever. You can also use the part. That's going to be with the so we can get the butter to get butter to eat. It will look like, uh, you can do it with chicken, like sort of like a, like a ground chicken. You can, even, you can do sort of like a, you can do like a, you can use Beyond Beef or Impossible Meat and make some sort of like version with like cheese on top of it and do almost like a cheese burger, like sorry, my open face. Um, I mean, I put caramelized onions on my burgers. Uh, you could do it with, um, you could even just make the tart dough by itself, blind bake it, which just means baking it with nothing on it. And then you can put, I sometimes will like spread it with, um, with goat cheese or crème fraîche or cream cheese. And then I put um, thinly sliced red onions and tomatoes and, and smoked salmon all over it and capers. And I have like a brunch pizza. Or you can even put everything bagel spice on the tart dough and make it like a really like a bagel, like a, like a giant bagel. But, uh, more hand, but easier to split between more people. You know what would be fun? Um, uh, Trader Joe's now sells that uh, everything but the bagel. Have you ever had that? With you know, they have like what would be on an everything bagel. Yeah, I've had that. Thing, that would be um, fun to shake on that. Oh, hundred percent. I'm gonna just take my shirt off. Also, looks so nice. Yeah. Thank you. We'll zoom down for it. And I'm gonna cut into it. Actually, you know, I should take a picture, right? Why not? Then a picture on the video. And you can sort of hear the snap a little bit. The edges. It's nice to put in the middle. You can cut, I think I'm going to cut maybe like a nice wedge over here. You see it's fully cooked on the bottom. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. That's why I did it on the bottom with the bite. I can eat for you. Thank you for sacrificing. Mm. So, it's, it did burn a roof in my mouth, but you have the creamy and tangy goat cheese from the bottom and on, on the top. As the onions continue to cook in the oven, they get even more sort of like lacquered. So, you have this sort of sweet sensation, right? but you also have a little bit of the, the tartness from the vinegar and the lemon juice. 
and the apples are cooked down a lot. They're almost like creamy. It's like an apple. Definitely great for dinner. You could have it with like a wonderful sort of peppery arugula salad, or if you make it in the winter, it's great with some sort of like a soup that you can dump it in. Or, um, you can, if you're trying to enjoy some of the last vestiges of summer over the, you know, maybe over Labor Day weekends, you can sit outside, hope you can make this, it's really great because it's, stays really tasty, even if you have it at room temperature. Um, but yeah, so I'm happy to stay on with people. It's 8.20, we end in like 10 minutes. Whoever wants to stay on, I'm happy to answer questions, um, show you more pictures of me eating this tart. Uh, but E.T. Spice. Oh, everything spice? Oh. Um, so everything, you can make your own everything bagel spice, actually. Um, you need um, a dried onion. Uh, you can either use the sort of like onion powder, those are okay, but sort of dehydrated onion is the best. Um, poppy seeds, sesame seeds. Close sesame seed is great, but um, you can buy regular everywhere. Um, plus some salt, maybe some garlic if you want. But those first ones are the, the main, but everywhere has a slightly different variation. Yeah, you can buy it a lot of places now. Um, Costco sells themselves like a big thing of it. The one at Trader Joe's, I think, is a nice blend. Mm -hmm. so, they were like sort of like the first sort of mainstream supermarket that I saw was, was selling it. Um, but it's great, you know, I put it on, um, I, I love to put it on when I make avocado toast. Yeah, maybe a little bit of olive oil. Maybe a little, little olive oil, maybe a little bit of, if you have any pomegranate seeds, um, or a little balsamic. Really, you could buy the dollar store? You can buy everything at the dollar store now. <laughs> they just, you know, they want your dollars. Except for, like, I asked somebody to buy me some hangers there, and, like, literally, it was like, I was thinking, like, you know, you get, like, ten hangers for a dollar, but no, you get three. <laughs> well, at least it's only a dollar. But they're really good for um, Tupperware. I buy a lot of plastic Tupperware in, in containers at the dollar store. We, um, we have Ocean State. Do you guys have Ocean State job lot? It's not in Rhode Island. It's, uh, they... They have these crazy deals where you actually go in there and if you ship it to the store, which is not environmentally sound, you actually end up not paying for the item and you get like a, a gift certificate that's good. Hmm. So they sell Bob, oh. Bob's uh, flowers there too. Wow, yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, Tarjay. <laughs> it is, um, oh. so Emily, you, you can't, I wouldn't necessarily use this dough for like a regular pie, like a, like a strawberry, like a fruit pie or something. You could use it for um, for any sort of other kind of tarts. Like I do a like a sliced apple tart with like caramel on it. That this is great for. You could use it for. Um, I love to use it as like the, the pie, like the hitter dough, and also the topping for um, like chicken pot pie or vegetable pot pie. I do like a fall vegetable like pot pie. It's great. Sometimes when I do that one, I will add a little bit of turmeric or poultry seasoning to the dough. Give it. A, Sort of orangey color and also give them a little of that flavor. You can use it for, um, it's really great to do it as a topper if you're making like a, like a strawberry shortcake. You can use it as like a layer or like a napoleon type thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there's a million different ways to use it, but I wouldn't use it for a regular food bite. It, just, it won't stand up to it. Although, I once tried to use it as a cheat version for making hamantashen. They tasted good, they were more crumbly. Like once you took the first bite, they were sort of like crumbly, but it worked. You don't have to let so if you want hamantash it quickly, you can use this down. Um, but yeah, so I hope uh, if you didn't cook tonight, I hope you do cook and make this or have somebody cook it for you. Um, if you did, I wanted, I'd love to know how yours came out. I know Emily, you said your tart is in the oven, right? So I'd love to know how it comes out. Um, and I'd also love to know what variations people come up with. You know, if you let, if you do the pairing Gruyere one, let us know. Um, and thank everybody who, um, everyone who donated. So um, in addition to the tickets, people were also um, had a chance that they wanted to donate. Uh, and so we raised over a hundred dollars that is going to be donated to No Kid Hungry. I think that uh, especially now, it's really important to um, to take care of others and children, especially suffer a lot in our time. So thank you so much. And Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Oh, it's such a nice respite from all the stuff that's going on in the world. You know, just to yeah. you know, sit around and cook and talk. That's how I feel. I love, you know, it's very cathartic and very therapeutic to me. So thank you so much for joining me. 
Um, I hope to see you. We're going to be doing another one um, during Sukkot. And um, we'll be doing a new recipe. And if you have any questions or comments, please you can feel free to write to me. I put my email in the chat, but I'll also be sending a follow up email to okay. everyone. I'm not seeing it in the chat. Put it up. I think a lot of other people have sort of already commented. So I think I'm But I'll also be sending a follow up email. So if you got the email to get into the meeting tonight, then uh, you'll get the next email too. Take another bite before we all go. <laughs> it's almost like a very fancy, savory pizza. But you don't feel it doesn't feel as heavy. So my family gets to eat the rest of this. So have a wonderful night. Um, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Um, Shana Tova um, to everybody who celebrates. Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy the rest of your week. Stay safe, stay healthy.